My name is Monique, and today we're going to be delving into the world of uh, local vehicle assembly in the 254. And uh, Big Boy Trev is in the studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thursday, you know, it's Friday, so the weekend is almost clear when you see me. Right? Yes, yes. And you're all about the weekend and the good vibes. Correct. I know you work really hard, so I know you're also looking forward to this day as well, just like me. Definitely. <laughs> just have a chance just to talk to the people. I like Tell it. them what I've been up to. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm actually just from Karen, we were just filming a piece for a new state-of-the-art um, service center. It's called Insignia. Insignia Service Center on Karen. It's very bougie and things. So they've got like new stuff that's coming up and i'm happy that we're going to be partnering with them very soon um so it's been a good one so fantastic if you're on that current side yeah if you play, pay, pay them a visit and then make sure you watch cars with big boy trev this sunday 6 30 p.m and get in home for everything about and the blah 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 fantastic anyway. and you've been really busy but uh, you didn't get stuck in traffic i like that no. that route is a good route yes actually so from karen coming mm. downwards yeah it's clear so wow. even the Southern Bypass to come to Mombasa Road, yeah. it's pretty clear. I didn't get any traffic. Even where you expect a bottleneck near the bridge at, at Airtel, mm. it was clear. Wow. Through and through. Perfect timing. It's uh, divine design. I'm glad you're here. And we're going to be talking about um, uh, this amazing topic. So make sure you follow and stream spicefm.co.ke. I'm having one of those long weeks. Yes. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's been heavy and it's... Um, a lot of celebration because yes. we're turning two. Yes. Um, the baby's got teeth now. Yes. So um, <laughs> we're really excited. And, uh, of course, keep sharing your memories and, uh, of course, your experience here. Uh, tuning in and watching spicefm.co.ke. Today we're going to be talking about the future of local vehicle assembly in Kenya. Yes. What's the history? Now, Kenya has been in a very strategic position in the uh, in the continent of africa so we are the gateway of eastern africa and we serve a market of close to 200 million people so when um after independence many uh, car companies d decided to set up shop in the country so that they can take advantage of this huge population that is prime for such products okay so in 1974 that's when the first vehicle assembly uh, facilities open in Thika, KVM mm. Thika, mm. and it was the home for CMC Motors, DT Dobi, and many other Leyland and Land Rover. They all assembled back then, back in the day. So we had a pretty vibrant um, start to that. That is 1974, close to what, almost 48 years ago, almost, I think, 47. Mm. Um, then the next one was Isuzu, so 1975, just across right here near Mombasa Road. Um, they they actually partnered with ICDC then, which was the industrial credit something. It's a government institution. So they set up that and they began assembling the Chevlove and the Suzu brands for our market. Brilliant. Then the last one, hmm. Simba. So Simba, back then, it was called AVA in Mombasa. So it's the only one of the oldest ones as well, it's fully owned by Simba Corporation. They began assembling Peugeot, the 504 that was very famous in the country. It was all assembled in Mombasa and Subarus and quite a number of other vehicles that were there. So, indeed, we had the good foundations almost 40 plus years ago. Mm. Yes. And it is a thriving industry when we talk about car assembly here in Kenya. You yes. mentioned that it is strategic yes. and, you know, Kenya is well positioned. But um, there's a lot of questions around, does this mean that uh, the vehicle is more affordable and it makes it more available? Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the companies that are in this industry and, of course, what it does to drive economic growth among other things so plug in with your questions we have a great topic today so make sure you plug it in on car culture um you also mentioned that uh, throughout the week um you have um more content that you're doing yes mm -hmm. as always um every thursday you know it's car it's car day it's cars is big with trev on the spice drive so car culture we talk about cars and so much more right here on spice fm uh, Fridays on the Nairobian as well. We've got an article there. We talk about the latest happening in the market. Uh, so make sure you grab a copy of the Nairobian tomorrow. Then on Sunday, of course, our premium progr uh, program, Cars with Big Boy Trev. KTN Home, S Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Get to know what we've done latest I mean, as far as the motoring world is concerned. Then, of course, on Wednesday, Motor Digest on the standard. So across all platforms, we are there just for you. 
All right. Keep your questions coming in. We're about to jump into this conversation a little bit more. And it's all about the future of local vehicle assembly in Kenya. Big Boy Trevor has touched on the history of vehicle assembly in Kenya. We're going to be talking about the revival of uh, the process and uh, what the government has to say about um, this industry. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are keen to understand. In fact, a lot of people may not even know that uh, there's been um, a lot of companies that have been here. You've mentioned this. 70s? Yes, in the 70s, yes. Yeah. All these guys, all these guys were here. Peugeot, uh, Leyland, Land Rover. Mm-hmm. Um, we even had a British one called um, um, BMC, British Motor Corporation as well. There were quite a number who were assembling cars, even Ford, mm. uh, back in the day. Yeah. Yes, and they're trying to satisfy that because our market then was still closed. So it sort of supported those locally assembled vehicles. Yeah. And um, yeah, as the years went by, I think the market just depreciated and then once they opened the liberal sector, mm. anybody can import anything, mm. then it really killed that market. But now there's that revival. You shared um, the history of, um, you know, the vehicle assembly Correct. industry in yes. Kenya. Yes. Thriving, is that the same case today? What does it look like now? There, there is a renaissance at the moment mm. because... Um, during the 90s when the market was fully opened so that anybody could import anything um kenyan's choice was to buy a used a gray import vehicle from japan dubai Mm. then back in the day so because of the attractive of the price of the vehicle kenyans preferred to go on onto that trajectory so that that meant that uh most of the local dealers were going at losses because they couldn't produce a vehicle that was affordable and remember, back in the 80s, mm. our market was constricted. There was price control, so you, you only bought what was available. So the government had blocked importation of used cars from outside the country. So that decline went all the way to roughly about 2013. So when the current government got into power, they had a plan to revive these industries because, yes, there were you know, there are still small facets of builders in the country, so Isuzu was still doing their thing. Um, but they were the biggest. Everybody else had just kept quiet. So it was just, you know, manufacturing in small quantities. But the amount of potential, the amount of investment that, you know, this industry has brought into the country was immense. And the government was like, listen, we need to put this as part of the big four agenda. How do we grow uh, the motor industry? Because we are a big market. And surprisingly, we actually import 100,000 vehicles every year. 100,000 vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's a big number, you know. So... Um, st- the talk started. I remember the first big boy um, who z- decided to start this conversation was Volkswagen. As you know, Volkswagen is the second largest uh, vehicle manufacturer in the world, and they thought it would be wise for them to set up shop in Kenya as a launching pad towards East Africa. Um, and in 2016, December, they signed a big deal. It's a multi year deal that will see them um, assemble quite a number of cars which are already are on the roads. Mm. So they started with the Polo, the Volkswagen Polo, which is very popular. Then it proceeded to the Volkswagen Tiguan and the All Space. Then now um, they're just about to assemble the Touareg, which is amazing. And for oh, the wow. first time, that's a very complex vehicle to build. Mm. And they have plans for even the Amarok and many other of their brands are coming in. Um, then the next was Peugeot. Peugeot um, came because the French government was also keen on investing in the country. So when I- Emmanuel Macron came to the country in 2019, um, they signed a massive deal with Peugeot. Uh, it cost, I think the deal was about 2.1 billion shillings to set up a facility at the government KVM facility because it's owned by the government, partly owned by the government. So Peugeot uh, began assembling the 508 and the 3008 and it's still ongoing. Mm. Okay. Then soon after Mahindra came, Mahindra from India, you know, my good friends from India, how are you? Uh, namaste. Um, Mahindra, also big investment. They decided to set up shop in Mombasa at AVA and they're assembling the Mahindra pickup. And we'll soon start be seeing them on our roads with the police being one of their uh, key customers because it's a tough and rugged vehicle for everyday use. Um, again, Renault, again, very keen on getting into the market. Uh, Mitsubishi. Uh, also doing some stuff in Mombasa. Um, we also have Iveco. They have their facility in Mombasa at a place in Changamwe. Um, and then Scania. These are the trucks and buses. Tata. So there's a whole um, industry that's growing. And even now today, I was invited for the launch of the Mobius 3. Mobius is a local company that is 
assembling cars uh, right here at Samia Park and they mm. just assembled a 4x4. It looks pretty decent. looks like a Jeep. So it looks really nice. I think I see, I, I've see. i seen one. Yes. I think I've seen one. A so, black one. So there's a new one. Mm. If you go to the site of uh, Mobius, you'll see the lodge. It looks pretty good. Pretty decent. Mm. And I can't wait to drive it next week. So oh, nice. I, I will, I'll bring it here and we'll have a test drive and then we're going to show the people how it is. You know our studio is big enough to bring that car in. Yes. Like we fancy. Yes. So you could bring it in park it right there on the stage correct and maybe we can all take a pic yes so we can know that you know and we can drive it you can drive it <laughs> just get to feel a, a hang of it so from that perspective mm. um there is a big renaissance and 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 i think it's good for the country especially as we target towards 2030 mm. yes. you know there's been conversations around um what this does for the youth yes. of the country um their benefits of having um a thriving industry when it comes to uh, this particular area. And we're seeing other countries across the region um, also trying to own that space. Yes. Uh, Rwanda is coming really fast. Uh, we recently saw highlights from Kigali. Yes. Uh, where Kagame and uh, Samia Suluhu were at a assembly, assembly plant. Yes. That was a uh, Volkswagen. Volkswagen, yes. Yeah. And um, there's been hush hush conversations about that being the next spot you know the place to be where the action is yes H how true is that and 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 what's the edge that kenya has um over the countries across the region um it's very good for rwanda rwanda mm. we consider it like a uh, singapore of africa it's a small city state um you're able to implement laws quite easily and even some of these uh new things that we probably think of autonomous driving mm. you know um you know car pooling, it can work in such a situation where the country is small and the level of legislation is minimal. So a lot of companies are trying to uh, set up hubs there so that they're able to try these technologies in Africa. But uh, the biggest market in Eastern Africa is Kenya. Mm. And um, one of the biggest things we have is our skill set. Our human capital is immense. So we have a lot of people who've gone through university and colleges that are very good at uh, technical and sciences all right so in fact a lot of the people who are working in rwanda are kenyans mm. the people working at that facility are kenyans mm -hmm. and it shows that you know if we just not focus on just oh i'm a kenyan we can't do anything i think as an east african block we have the right resources for every single individual so um it's a good thing but the most important thing about uh vehicle assembly is number one job creation especially to our youth because you know um this idleness and you seeing people getting into funny all sorts of things is because they don't have jobs so this industry is once they set up at least i know each manufacturer is able to bring in close to 500 jobs so this is somebody who was just sitting at home now there's they have an opportunity for them to be you know a, a metallurgist somebody who you know uh, does some panel beating they get some training and they're able to do and assemble cars mm. um on the greater scheme of things again supply of local components so for example the, the volkswagen polo that is being assembled here the seats can be done locally mm. the windscreens can be done locally i think so that's in line with the uh governments by kenya built correct built kenya yes uh, do you think that there's opportunities realistically because i know it sounds great um you know when you hear the bulletins and everything and yeah you're like okay that's a sweeper yes um <laughs> i don't know if you know practically speaking young people have opportunities to also be part of this buzzing industry the automotive industry has the potential uh, to significantly contribute to the manufacturing sector. Oh, yeah. This has also been part of the conversation of what the government wants to do for young people. Yes. And I don't want it to be um, one of those things that they read in the news, they said, they said. Yes. The practicality of it, um, especially when it comes to assembly. It is very practical. It's just putting in place systems so that uh, the youth get mm. preferential treatment. Uh, there, last week I saw a young man who's started a cable, mobile phone cable uh, uh, assembly facility. Pretty simple, but he makes type C's and type A of cables. Mm. He's a Kenyan, mm. young guy, 27. Mm. Mm. If mm. this guy was just empowered, right. say by a bank or by an institution, to build um, wiring for Volkswagen, what would stop him? He just needs to meet the criteria of quality. And they offer that. So whenever you're bidding to make a system you're given these are the levels of quality this is what you need to achieve he just needs capital he needs to be pushed 
to get into that space. So there's a lot of potential. Not only that, we have so many talented designers in the country. Mm. Many. Kiko Romeo, you know, Dana Oportis of this world. There are many. When they're coming to, you know, when you're uh, b- uh, buying a Volkswagen, a Polo, that has Kenyan vibrant colors on the seats. You've seen uh, BMW in South Africa. They actually got an old lady mm. to design the seven series with I the beads. I saw that. Yes. Went viral. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. And, and you, you find that you're tailor making a vehicle based on the needs of the country. Why can't we do that? Mm. You see, this magnificent red shirt is Kenyan. Right, right, right. You know, maybe I, I prefer my Volkswagen in such a color. Mm. I don't know. Mm. So there's a lot of opportunities that we can harness and, and see. We've seen people making tablets. Jomo Kenyatta University, they make tablets. You know, instead of having a traditional radio, we can have a tablet screen that gives you all the information. Yeah. You can have a radio, it could have, you know, uh, weather, navigation, everything, and it's a tablet, it's the price of the radio. Mm. But but it's all about quality still. Yes. Even if it's buy Kenya, build Kenya. Correct. As, as, as we still continue to do that. Um, and I like that you pointed out, even <laughs> across the region, most yeah. of the talent yes. is Kenyan. Um, so... We hope that we don't get that brain drain. Everyone trying to leave and think, you know, the opportunities are outside the borders. They're right here yes. I- in Kenya. And that way, I think locally assembled cars can be a mainstay on Kenyan roads. Correct. And we can say, you know what, we were part of something. And, you know, it can be an ongoing conversation uh, with such uh, a, a beautiful history here in Kenya. Yes. I, I, I think that... Um, uh, you've confirmed that Kenya is still king uh, when it comes to that particular industry. Um, and there's a lot more that can be done. Um, you mentioned the brands yes. that are here. Yes. And uh, more to come. More to come? Yeah. Um, I know Ford are uh, busy doing their final setup. Mm. They want to build a Ford Ranger right here in Kenya at Thika. Um, I know uh, Renault and um, Hyundai also planning to set up shop right here in Nairobi as well. Yeah. They want to assemble the Krita and the duster mm. which is going to be locally available um i know two chinese companies already doing sino truck and hobo uh hk motors uh, on the main highway towards uh, limuru doing mm. that already mm. and they're putting up final steps and um i know for a fact that just across the border uganda there's this bus company called kira mm. kira are the first ones who are doing electric buses so that electric conversation also is now on our borders. You know, you see the bypass happening, the, the main highway right now, there's going to be a BRT line. If you want to think sustainable development, why not don't we just, you know, embrace that? Let's talk to our brothers across the country. It's a win-win for us. Mm. You know, electric buses, the highway makes sense, you know. So wow. there's, a, there's a lot of vibe happening it's vibrant it's just a time of harnessing that energy together right. and looking at ourselves as east africans rather than just being kenyan